Greetings and welcome back to Room 303 in Sophomore English. We turned out the poetry collection in your hymnal for unit number four, our poetics unit number seven. We're going to pick up Langston Hughes's uh, The Weary Blues. Before we get there, though, jump to 2B really quickly in page 733. And we'll be concentrating now in poetry collection seven and eight on sound devices. We have said this, of course, before that poetry has a lot to do with the music of the language. To tap, I'm just reading now at 7.33, to tap the music and words, poets use a variety of sound devices or patterns of word sounds. These include the following, and these are the four that you for sure want to have in your annotations. The first one is alliteration, repetition of consonant sounds at the beginnings of nearby words, as in silent song. Notice the repetition of the two S's. Assonance, the second one, the repetition of vowel sounds in nearby stressed syllables, as in Deep, dreamless, you can hear that E sound. Unlike rhyming syllables, assonant syllables end in different consonants. And then we have the word consonants, which is the repetition of consonant sounds at the ends of nearby stress syllables with different vowel sounds, as in the words heat of lightning. You can hear that, that repetition of the two, and I hope that you're looking in your hymnal to see it, not just hear it. And then finally, of course, onomatopoeia, the use of words to imitate actual sounds, such as buzz, tap, and splash. We're usually familiar with that because it's such a, it's such a strange sounding word. Sound devices can add to the mood of a poem, imitate the sound of events, or reflect the poem's meaning. And again, like we said about figurative language, we also will say that about this. What is it and how does it work? In other words, we're paying attention to sound. As, as we read, we want to know how poets use sound devices to create a mood or emphasize ideas. Let's turn now to Langston Hughes. Notice your biographic information, therefore, in 1902 to 1967. I'm with you on 735. As a young man, Hughes moved from Missouri to Kansas to Illinois to Cleveland, Ohio, where he was voted class poet in high school. Later, he settled in the Harlem section of New York City. He contributed to the Harlem Renaissance. Write that term down. We're going to see that next year as juniors in more detail. A flowering of African-American artistic activity in the 1920s and 30s. Hughes once defined poetry as, quote, the human soul entire, squeezed like a lemon or lime, drop by drop into atomic words, end quote. Beautiful, beautiful idea. Just to remind, by the way, 734, we want to make sure that those vocabulary words are words that we know. Now, weary blues, let's say a couple of things to set you up for this one. A lot of students who are very much lovers of music and their special genre of music, I'll just say what, we, what once was called rap music, for example, a, a lot of students do not understand the legacy of where music came from. And a whole lot of American music is born in what's called the blues, a style of music that is specifically going to try to capture a certain kind of powerful emotive component. It does come from the Deep South. It does come from the slavery South and post-Civil War. And as those emancipated slaves found their way north, they brought with them this style of music, which Langston Hughes said was fundamental to understanding America. You can't understand America without understanding the blues. Let's now just listen to this poem and read along on page 737 and just get a sense of the power of the ways that cues can capture issues of the blues. Let's, let's, let's study it. The Weary Blues by Langston Hughes. Drone in a drowsy syncopated tune, rocking back and forth to a mellow croon. I heard a Negro play down on Lennox Avenue the other night by the pale, dull pallor of an old gas light. He did a lazy sway. He did a lazy sway to the tune of those weary blues. With his ebony hands on each ivory key, he made that poor piano moan with melody. All blues, swaying to and fro on his rickety stool, he played that sad, ragged tune like a musical fool. Sweet blues, coming from a black man's soul. All blues, in a deep song voice, 
with a melancholy tone. I heard that Negro sing, that old piano moan. Ain't got nobody in all this world. Ain't got nobody but myself. I was born to quit my frowning and put my troubles on the shelf. Thump, 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 with his foot on the floor. He played a few chords, then he sang some more. I got the weary blues, and I can't be satisfied. Got the weary blues, and can't be satisfied. I ain't happy no more, and I wish that I had died. And far into the night, he crooned that tune. The stars went out, and so did the moon. The singer stopped playing and went to bed while the weary blues echoed through his head. He slept like a rock for oh, a man that's dead. Now before we even annotate this poem, just write down really quickly at 3A, how is this poem different from every other poem that you've read with us in sophomore English so far? I mean, obviously you've not read anything like this. Agreed? You haven't. So, how's it different? What makes this poem so different from everything that's come before? Some will say it's that tone. It's a different kind of tone. Some will say it's the rhythm. The words are put together in such a way that they create a certain kind of feeling. Right? Tone, mood. A certain kind of feeling or mood that's powerfully emotional. The key line, of course, of this poem on 737 is line 15. It is, of course, the sweet blues coming from a black man's soul, somehow assuming the history of a people who have been terribly subjugated and set in a terrible situation from which they have to somehow find a way out. And I would say, of course, all America had to find and continues to struggle to find its way out of that experience. Let's talk really quickly at level one. What is this poem, quite frankly, about? Well, it really is about the power of the music and somehow trying to capture the sad song, the song that goes deep into the night. And then finally, of course, it is a, it is a poem that tries to capture the sounds of that sadness, the sounds of the blues, the weary blues. At 2A, what do you want to constitute as a key message here? Some have said that this is really about, the message is about how art helps artists get through pain, suffering, turmoil, anxiety, angst, the blues. But really we study this poem and it's the most brilliant at its 2B level. Notice, tune, croon, play, night, light, sway. Do you see it? The, the in rhyme, the in rhyme. Do you see it? All the way through the poem. Stool, fool, blues. See it? That is to say, the ability to use end rhyme to give a sense of a certain kind of, almost like anticipated ry um, um, rhythm. And then, of course, the rhythm itself, swaying to and fro on his rickety stool. He played that sad, raggy time like a musical fool. The rhythms are powerful as well, so you can comment as well on that. The repetition at line 24, thump, 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 thump. Some see this even as onomatopoeia in terms of the way that the word thump, it plays a game of what's actually going on there. Right. Notice the quotation marks that set off lines from some of the blues that are being set within the poem itself. And then the way the poem ends in terms of powerful metaphors or symbolism. The stars went out and so did the moon. The singer stopped playing and went to bed while the weary blues echoed through his head. He slept like a rock or a man that's dead. This, of course, symbolism of the man that's dead, the passing of 
the passing of musical genre. It's fascinating to me the number of high school sophomores who don't know anything about the blues. They love other kinds of music which wouldn't exist if it hadn't been for the blues. Finally at 3A, what does a poem like this, what does a text like this bring to your mind? Do you have other texts that come to mind at all um, that, play, that play the same game? Of course, I can ask it this way. On your playlist of songs you listen to, which is the one that speaks most powerfully to pain, to suffering, to the blues, to feeling like you're kind of down and out and you're sad? When you're really, really sad, what's the text you like to listen to? in terms of music. It might be video. It might be games that you play as well, and the gaming. Um, what is for you the game that you play that has the saddest kind of music, the most melancholy-like music? And finally, a 3B. This poem often will bring out that question of, when was the last time you were really pretty down? When was the last time you felt what is being represented here? That just kind of really depressed feeling like, man, I got nothing right now going on good in my life at all. When was the last time that you felt that? And what allowed you to get out of an experience like that? Can music help you get out of an experience like that? Do you think that talking about how you're feeling sad can actually help you to get out of that or to play music? I know musicians will often say, playing music that's sometimes melancholy ironically helps me to get out of a feeling of sadness. Well, the genius Langston Hughes, we'll see more of Hughes before we're finished uh, with our high school career, thankfully.